Hey guys, it's Ray Jordan. Today I'm going to show you how to paint, but also give you five tips on how to be a better DIY painter. Let's go. All right, welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe down below. But this channel is all about home projects, DIY, auto repair, venture, uh, just having a good time on this channel. If you're a dad like me and you want to know how to do certain things that <laughs> you face in life, just check out this channel because I've got all kinds of fun videos uh, to watch and will educate you and maybe help you. But anyway, we are doing some painting today. So just like the title says, five tips to better DIY painting. A lot of people think painting is easy. Well, it is once you actually know how to do it. But there's all kinds of mistakes that people make so I'm gonna give you five tips on how to actually paint a room better and make it look good and also make it look like uh, your second grader didn't do it okay so let's get right into it the first tip number one buy and use good quality tools I know that you may have one little room to paint but don't go to Home Depot Lowe's wherever you're doing sh your shopping and buy that dollar paintbrush because you're like well I'm only gonna use it one time and I'll throw it away well let me tell you that that little dollar two dollar paintbrush is cheap <laughs> and you'll be kicking yourself the whole time you're painting this entire wall it's going to do a terrible job as, as far as the as far as the usability and as far as giving you a good finish so that's first tip is buying good paint brushes and good rollers roller cover is the first part but also the roller handle is the second part you just want to buy good products and good tools that will get the job done correctly now no matter where you shop if it's lowe's home depot sherwin williams any kind of paint store like that that you don't have to get the most expensive uh, product or the tool you can get the mid grade but just don't get the cheap stuff leave that for the people who haven't watched this video you're gonna see a huge difference in that little dollar two dollar paintbrush as compared to a fifteen dollar paintbrush i happen to use wooster now that's tip number one but tip number two goes right into that buy a good quality paint if you don't have a good paint it's definitely not going to look good on the walls and it's definitely not going to go on easy and it's definitely not going to cover and all paint brands have a different quality so some do have a watered down one that doesn't cover as well and then they've got different grades all the way up to like an a a plus grade so use a mid-grade paint you don't have to get the most expensive one but use a mid-grade paint that's going to cover and as far as coverability um, that's going to come down to the color that's going on top of the other color as well so that's a whole different subject but buy a good quality paint so that when you do your cut in on the edges on the baseboard on the ceiling around door casings and everything that the paint actually covers but doesn't leave streaks when you're cutting it on with your brush okay tip number three lay down some drops just in case i know you're a professional DIYer which I'm not sure why you're watching this video, but if you are, that's great. If you already know how to paint, but maybe you're just getting five better tips that you haven't seen before, uh, thanks for watching. But make sure you lay down some drops because even the best painters might get one little drop and it all depends on the color you're putting on the walls that well, that one little drop drops in the carpet, drops on a hardwood floor, and then it can be hard to get off. Hardwood floor is a little bit different. You can usually just wipe that off, but carpet, you know, some, some heavy drops or anything like that, they can be kind of hard to get up. Okay, on to tip number four. When you paint a wall generally, the easiest way is to cut in the edges. And then what I mean by that is we're gonna trim against the ceiling, trim down the corner, trim along the baseboard. We're gonna do all that first, make a giant box, and we're gonna make a nice and wide box. Now, it's up to you on how wide and how good you are, but if you cut it wide, then when you're rolling up and down, you won't have to get as close to the ceiling and possibly touch the ceiling with your tan paint, blue paint, whatever color, and touch the ceiling, and then you have to touch up the ceiling. So that's the first thing, is cut in first, then you can use your roller. Don't just grab a roller and start going in big X's or W's. Also, when cutting in, to make a nice straight line. You don't always have to tape. If you start getting better, you can you, you don't need to put that masking tape down if you can make straight lines, but also breathe when you're cutting in or hold your breath and <laughs> cut in with that brush. It doesn't make sense now, but you'll see it in a second. All right, the fifth tip, and actually I've got some bonuses for you, so keep watching. The fifth tip is to roll from ceiling to the ground, ground to ceiling, up and down, up and down, one, one to two lines at a time. Like I said before, don't make giant W's and just crisscross and just go wherever. You want to go, you want to cover from the left to the right or right to the left. That way you do one wall at a time, then move on to the next wall and move on to the next wall. The reason for that is because any kind of overlapping or lapping of lines, you might not put it on as thick over here, but it is over here. And then you've got crisscross images when it dries 
you'll be able to see those lines on the wall. If you're using an eggshell, you definitely don't want lap lines or satin and into semi-gloss as well. Those those lap lines will show up. A lot of people are going with the flat matte because it has just a shiny, or just a, a hint of shine to it, but it's also flat. It can also be touched up later. Eggshell is probably the hardest to touch up. You run into the wall, ding it, do whatever, and you've got to touch up the spot. When you touch up that spot, you'll notice it in the light. It might be a little bit shinier from a different angle. Okay, tip number six. There's a bonus right here. Just doing walls, paint the walls. Otherwise, if you're doing walls and trim, do the trim first, then do the walls. If you're doing walls, ceiling, and trim, then do the ceiling and the trim first, then do the walls last. And the reason is you can paint the trim and you can get it on the wall if you have to. You don't have to be so careful because you're already going back to paint the walls. So if you paint the trim, you can get the paint on the walls, go wherever you need to. Then when you go back to do the walls, now you're cutting in a nice, crisp, sharp line. And that's gonna be the same thing for the ceiling. If you have no crown at the top, what you wanna do is, actually, let me back up. If you do have crown at the top, you'll still wanna do the ceiling first. Then you'll cut in the trim, and you can get it on the wall, just don't get it on the ceiling. Get it on the wall, and then you'll do the walls. Whatever it comes down to, just do the walls last. And the seventh, tip i gave you two bonuses just be patient <laughs> i know that sounds funny but when you're cutting in a whole wall like i said you're cutting in the box you're cutting around windows you're cutting in around door frames and door casings and around outlet covers and everything like that be patient because that's probably the longest part then once you get to the roller then you can really move so you might take a might take an hour to paint a room or to cut it in and it might only take 20 minutes to roll it so I know it seems like a long process as you're cutting everything in. Don't resort to just picking up the roller and just painting everything as close as you can because then when you go back and touch, or when you go back and cut it in and kind of really touch it up and fill in the, fill in the blanks you missed, the uh, paint won't look, like, look correct when it dries because you've got a roller finish, which is your orange peel finish, and then you've got a bristly kind of streaky finish, which is your um, brush finish, your brush cut in. That's why you cut in first with the brush cut in so you're rolling over those bristle lines. Now if you have good quality paint, that thicker paint isn't really going to show up that streakiness or those brush lines. So there you go, there are your five, uh, actually seven tips for better DIY painting. So I hope those help. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below and let me know what I didn't cover. If you're a pro DIY, I'm always ready to learn. So leave a comment or a question down below and let me know what I missed. Um, otherwise, anybody can do this. It just takes a few easy, simple steps to get started and you'll be on your way to starting with this room, but then probably finishing the rest of the house and changing all kinds of colors, which if you're uh, uh, the wife watching this video, sorry, uh, dad or guy, <laughs> if you're the guy watching this video, 
don't tell your wife that you have these new skills because yes, you will be doing the other 2,000 square feet of this house. Anyway, if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, hit that thumbs up button, and check back on the channel for more helpful videos like this. I'm The Ranker Dane, hope this video helped, and I'll see you later. Okay, one more tip. Take your outlet covers off because that's the worst thing when people paint and don't take the outlet covers off because you don't get that last little half inch, quarter inch that it covers. So it takes all of about five seconds to take these off. So just do it.